on the video. Today in this very spontaneous trek, we talked about travel and discussed provocations such as a world without travel and as the world becomes increasingly more digital, traveling will become less meaningful. And I seriously hope that you enjoy the responses as much as I did. So without further ado, here's the trek. Hello everyone and welcome to The Trek. The Trek is a Civics Unplugged series where community members participate in meaningful discussions on topics that are too often neglected when thinking about building the future. Through prompting questions and provocations, we venture together into complex but important conversations related to building the future and democracy. We understand that this work requires ongoing dialogue, but it's a journey worth trekking through. I'm Madison, I'm a high school senior from Oklahoma, joined by some community members, some 2020 fellows, 2021 fellows, and a special guest, question mark. <laughs> Bernardo is technically not a fellow, but um, anyway, we're gonna start off with a word association. We're talking about travel. So when you see your name on the screen, give a brief introduction and say your one to three words. Oh, are we just jumping in? Okay, great. Um, invited. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, my name's Thanasi. I am a co-founder at Civics Unplugged. Um, they're trying to fire me every day, but I somehow maintain my spot. Um, my word association with travel, I guess my one word is um, life-changing because it's all encompassing. My name is Julia, I'm 23 years old. I live in Pennsylvania and um, my word would be exploration, pretty self-explanatory, but that's what I think of. My name is Lara and I'm a freshman at UNC and I think of um, connecting. My name is Angelina, I'm from Germany, I'm 17 years old, and my word would be responsibility, because I think, especially in the context of climate change and global warming, we should uh, think about that as well. Uh, my name is Lua, I'm from Brazil, I'm a 2021 fellow of Civics Unplugged, I'm a senior in high school, and my word would be um, understanding. Hi, my name is Bernardo. I am the special guest. Um, I think my word will be culture. Hi, um, I'm Ayushi. I'm currently a junior. I'm 16 um, and a 2021 fellow. And three words I think of are culture, languages, and opportunities. Um, hey, I'm Gary. I'm also one of the co-founders of CU, calling in from outside Chicago. And uh, my three words are, opens you up. Mm -hmm. Love that. I'm just going to say a dream, probably because I feel like people dream about traveling a lot. I know that when I have a trip upcoming anywhere, like, in a, in a close proximity, even it's like six months from now, I'm always like dreaming about it. Or like, I think about travel memories really stick out to me. So I would say dream. Um, but yeah, so if anyone has a question or a provocation they want to pose, go ahead. Why is travel meaningful? Well, should I just start saying something to that? Yeah, go for it. Well, I think um, um, it gives you a whole new perspective and also kind of a distance to your, um, yeah, to your home and your comfort zone. It, I think it also gives you the possibility to challenge your views and your, yeah, Maybe also uh, it could be um, should, uh, let you face some whole new um, difficulties and challenges you never knew you would 
or bring, bring you in situations you never knew you would get it someday. Yeah, I think travel like make you understand like about other cultures, but also about yourself and like your country. I feel I've most connected with like Brazil, my country, um, when I was traveling because I could understand what is like the traits in my personality that are because of my culture and what is just like because we're humans and everything. So I really think that we you can understand yourself better and your culture and also the world in general. Yeah. Um, I agree with what everyone said. I also just think it's really fun to get to see like different places and how different people like live and do different things. Yeah, a ton of a ton of my experiences with travel have always been in like groups of people uh, for like competition or whatever. And I felt like I gained like you gain a relationship with those people that that is is way more meaningful and I guess it, it you just grow it quicker than you would if you were just hanging out in your in your home country and also like when I used to do model UN the, the Brazilian team was always like my favorite people to, to hang out with they were always the most fun I don't know how much that counts but yeah I also think that um it's important to note that anything that kind of takes you out of your normal lived experience and deviates from the normal is meaningful and exciting I think of the smallest examples like when I'm at school and it's raining outside and the kids are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's raining. Just like the, the slightest, like anything that happens outside of the norm is exciting and meaningful. And I think that traveling follows that same thing because it's like a total immersion and something completely different and outside of, you know, your comfort zone, like Angelina said. Yeah, adding on to that, I think it makes you like appreciate the things that you like, it makes you appreciate things that have always been in your life, but you've never paid attention to like it, it makes you like pay attention to new things like you can go to an art museum in like a random city and like really appreciate art, but then never go to the one in your local hometown because like you just like don't think it's worth it or it's not as like hyped up. So I just think it makes you like appreciate what you have and like it makes you pay attention to new things. I love hearing these stories from people like a trip you've taken that has had the biggest impact on you. I totally agree with Lara. I think it's a life experience. It's not the same to go on Brazil and try feijoadas and try caipirinhas than just knowing what is a caipirinha. I think it's a life experience. My bad, we are another question, my bad. Oh no, you know, you're good. <laughs> um, yeah, you're okay. To add to the why is travel meaningful, um, I think in this time where you can read a lot about, watch a lot of videos about different places, sometimes that's that's cool. I mean, a lot of times that's, that's really cool, but um, there's a lot of misinformation about different places, uh, obviously. And you don't really know like what's actually going on until you're actually there. Um, I mean, I, I even even to this day, I, don't, I still don't really know all that's happening in Hong Kong, but like I talked to some people there and they were just saying how the news really exaggerates, like the, like the, the protests, the, the property damage, that type of stuff. And it, it sounds, sounds familiar, right? Like, you know, the news really amplifies the the most kind of newsworthy like moments and like I don't know, I remember there's like this there's a really good picture of a bunch of photographers like at a protest and like it was an, it was like basically entirely peaceful and then there's like a burning trash can and you had like 10 photographers like all taking a picture of the same trash can because it's like a flashy shot so I, I, that always stuck with me. Yeah, I mean, one of my, my biggest like arguments for like going and taking a trip or whatever is because even if you don't like think it's going to be meaningful to you, just all the experiences and things you see and things you hear, and knowledge will always like be useful to you down the line, um, especially when studying like international relations or whatever. But even like 
food and culture and people and, and different like dialogues that happen 40 years down, you can just recall the, the knowledge you gained on this like small trip and it, it like puts you in a different mind frame. So I think it's super important. But Gary, I want to hear your, your, um, the biggest, your most impactful trip that you've taken. Like the call out. Um, I guess uh, I've always been pretty privileged to live in a looking like pretty nice house, like a, a nice, a very nice house, um, the upper middle class in the U.S. And then when I would go back to China, like mainland China, when I was a kid, um, right outside of the apartment building of my both 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 sets of grandparents, there would be people just sitting on the road, like all like all day, right, holding up signs like "I can do plumbing," like or "I can I can like change tires or whatever." They're, like their skin is like burnt, like toast, because they're just waiting for work um really kind of like unpaved road like like a lot of like dirty roads and um it's just a lot it's a lot of poverty and that really um it really helped put things in perspective for me what about you I talk too much. I, I, I defer to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, I defer to Lara or Julia or, or Bernardo, special guest. Take us away. Okay, so I think it's my turn. Uh, well, a, a significant trip that I have is two years ago, I went to Guatemala and knowing that there are some parts where internet is not a thing where you see poverty with your eyes. I, I really agree with Shank. We are really, 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 afford we are fortunate of the life we, we have. So yeah, I, I went to Guatemala, that was my trip. Um, I wanted to share something. Um, I think my um, biggest um, impactful trip or thing uh, was when I went to Portugal, it was like a year and a half or something. And I think it relates to what I was saying about like traveling and understanding other cultures and understanding your culture as well. Cause I really haven't thought about like being a Brazilian before of that, but because I went to Portugal and I passed like three months there cause I was visiting my family there and it really immersed and everything in there anyways. Um, I really understood like the way that they thought about Brazil in there and there's a lot of immigration and everything. So it was a, not a positive viewing. And I kind of started understanding like all this immigration stuff and everything. And I started to, trying to like realize what it is to be like a part of a country and started to be more patriotic in a way because I could understand and I could cry, try to defend my country and somehow because they were like um, talking fake news or something. So yeah, I think it was important for me to understand like a perspective about like how other countries viewed my country and understand my culture, I think something like that. Mine is reminds, like, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say mine actually reminds me of yours. Like um, when I go to Brazil, I, I see how like privileged I am where I'm from and like kind of like I understand why my parents made the decision to move here and like all of the stuff that they went through and it just makes me like very grateful for the experience that I have but it also makes me cherish the moments that I do have there more because I like see like how hard my grandparents and my uncles and my aunts um how hard they work to like be able to live the life that they have and things like that and um it just like I don't know it it made me like want to go into like global studies and like IR because I want to be able to help like countries to have like more equal footing. And like the more that I learn about it in school, it's like the more I realize that like, I don't know, the issues that are present are issues that were forced upon these like countries and communities. And because of like history, they've always been like, you know, at a disadvantage. So just like every place I go, like 
whether South America or like in Europe, I can really tell a difference. And it just like makes me want to change that. So I guess like all of them, but just like, especially seeing how like when I went to like Paris on an exchange trip, like I barely saw anyone in the streets, but every time I go to Brazil, like that's the first thing I see. So it's just like very interesting to see like how each country's history like affects its like present day and how like what I learn in school actually like happens and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I think I I also had the, the privilege to travel really cheap uh, for competition. And the, the first time that I like traveled abroad by myself was to Hungary. And I met like like one of my really best, like really, really good friends who like sort of lives with us now, which but the the opportunity to kind of like um, experience a bunch of different cultures in like these really small trips and interact with a bunch of kids from like India and I, we went to Portugal and Portugal branded themselves as the global like happy village and I was like that's not what you did you didn't that no but yeah it, it's interesting to see how all of the countries like brand themselves too and like how everybody talks about their history because because in America we we butcher our history right we totally wash it down and I wasn't conscious of that until I went abroad and saw that everybody else does it too so it's you know it doesn't make it better but good context. Yeah, this makes me want to pose a question, a provocation, uh, partly inspired by something that was said earlier. Um, so I think Lua mentioned that getting to meet people from different parts of the world kind of feels like traveling without actually going anywhere. And so the provocation I want to pose is as the world becomes increasingly more digital, travel becomes less meaningful. Wow. I personally don't think so because I feel like, well, first of all, like not everyone's a great communicator and even as good communicators, it doesn't always mean that you can understand what they're talking about, especially like when it comes to like, I don't know, like my friend wrote her common app essay on her favorite Danish food because her family's from Denmark. So like, um, I had no clue what any of those dishes were, what they tasted like, because like, I couldn't see it. And that kind of stuff, like you won't have, like, I think food is a big part of culture, at least like in all the cultures that I'm a part of. Um, so I feel like that, and also like not understanding, you know, when they talk about places they've been to and stuff, like when you read about it, it's not the same thing as seeing it. That's why like, there are so many like attractions everywhere you go. So I feel like pictures don't do it justice. And it also doesn't show you kind of like what Gary talked about earlier, what they're trying to like hide. So like, they're obviously like only going to take a picture of like what is going to get the most clicks or views or whatever, but they're not going to take pictures of everything else. And like the secret corners and like all the little adventures you can go on. Um, yeah, I definitely definitely agree to uh, Lara because uh, when I remember uh, my first trip to Barcelona, it was quite an amazing experience just by ex experiences the atmosphere, uh, walking through the streets and listening to the people speaking Spanish. And I went there when I just uh, were able to speak very little Spanish. I hadn't many classes in school yet and it was such an amazing experience to uh, really get to know people and also realize that they understand you no matter how much or how less you are able to speak but it's also the um how you be how you act and i think your body language and i don't think that this can be uh, transported through uh yeah virtual meetings yeah that's a, that's a great point. And I, I guess what I wonder is what, what types of cultures and, and people are um, like, uh, what's the word? Like their, their, their kind of value is not properly communicated right through just Zoom calls. And, and I would imagine like, an initial answer I have to that is people whose kind of culture is 
of just very kind of kinetic, right? And like very, very expressive body, right? And I don't know, I, I was a, a dancer in, in college and you can't, I don't know, you're not really dancing on Zoom, although that might be, maybe it's interesting, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yes, I really echo that whole atmosphere point you just made. I think you can gain a lot of information and like, con like you can, you can learn a bunch about different people. Um, but I think like there's, there's also part of travel, which is just like feeling and, and um, just, just, you also gain a lot of like street smarts and learn how to not be an idiot when it comes to just like being an individual, which I think is super important. And I, I don't think when people say zoom meetings and like all of that, I think people, totally disregard like the ability to read body language and read the way a person sitting in their chair and like understand how they're moving around is like a huge asset to have in any business. And you kind of don't, you don't learn it unless you're there. And then with the, the whole like cultures and, and all of that stuff in there, I, I think that there's still a huge point to travel and have, and like when we talk about work, right? Like face-to-face -face meetings, I don't think they're going anywhere once COVID leaves. I just think people are going to be lazier and try to do things off zoom, but it, it's just so much better when you're face to face. Uh, I think what you're making me realize is that because, because you can cop out with zoom now, it means it even, yeah, like it actually means a lot more, right. If you're, if you're willing to go that distance and like make that in-person connection, Yeah, I do agree that I will like become less meaningful. I think I will like gain other meaning. So um, I think it would increase the meaning and would like, I don't know, mean something else because you can like do this type of thing digitally. So why you would choose to do like not digitally, like in presence or something um, would be something that you would increasingly be uh, more cherished about and everything, as Gary said. So I think it's not about like gaining less meaning, but um, gaining other meaning. So it will be like changing the meanings of stuff and everything. Yeah, I totally agree with, with Lua. I think, I mean, these travels that are made for business cannot be made for soon. I mean, traveling will, will have more a deep connection with cultures and learning rather than being interested in just doing business. I think business travels will disappear and, and the travels to learn culture will continue to have an increase. I, I think that is my point of view. I think also like virtually it's like you just can't experience like the devotion that people have to their cultures like even in the U.S. like I I went to like Alaska one time and like you don't think like I don't I didn't have much of an opinion on Alaska it was kind of indifferent towards it but it was so crazy to go there and just see like how immersed people were and just like even just like hiking culture which I had not really like been exposed to very much is how like devoted people were there to like the wildlife and everything was so cool and just something like you can't like um, interpret just aesthetically on online so yeah yeah that's a great point Julia I almost think that because we have so much access to different cultures we're almost becoming desensitized to it right so we see people living in different ways all the time but it's a completely different experience when you're immersed in it just like you said you were for your Alaska trip mm -hmm. yeah, I think like human human culture from the beginning of time has always been like the the way we've shared like is by like letting people into your home and like letting them see how you live and your traditions right like like dances like every culture has their own dance and every culture has their own customs and stuff and i think that the internet has caused us to be able to like see one side of the culture and think we know all of it but but i think the only way to, to truly understand is like continuing this trend that humanity has had of like having these shared shared meals um like breaking bread together is a huge thing and, and dancing and singing songs um I know I had to sing a lot of Greek songs as a kid back in the village days, uh, which was a great experience. I was also gonna say to like the first part of the question about the people, um, 
that the people we see are only the people that have the privilege to be able to have these Zoom calls and like to have like Wi-Fi and have, you know, a computer for camera and all of these things. So we're like not being representative of like the whole community or country or culture. We're only getting, you know, higher ups or even to be able to communicate. Like you're talking to people that are educated in a different language and know English, which might, well, is probably not the case in most countries. So it's just like realizing that you're only getting like a grain of salt of like that culture and that community because you're getting like sometimes like only the top tiers. Yeah, so I guess a follow up question for that is like, mm, actually, never mind. I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> Anyone else have a question or want to add to this one? Well, maybe we could talk about um, several uh, future forms of traveling because I've um, mentioned the yeah the topic with responsibility and what do you think? How uh, can we still travel but not uh, maybe what could be other ways instead of taking a flight, for example? Virtual reality, that's my answer. I think VR is, is a cool, like my mom, my mom is a, a refugee from the Turkish invasion of Cyprus. So she grew up until she was my age about like a little bit um, in Cyprus and then she, she came here. And so we put her in my friend's VR and Google maps allows you to like go into street view, but in VR, she was able to like see her house um, and all of that stuff. And she was like moved to tears because it was the first time like she's been back there for, for 50, 60 years of her life. So I think that I think that that VR has the power to like let people into to seeing cool places like seeing the Great Wall of China or or you know like these really cool cultural landmarks. Well that's actually very cool. I've never imagined that it could be that huge impact on people. Um, this is this is a, a little abstract, but um, we have we have really iterated on the trek as a kind of portal in a way to like higher consciousness. So like it's a very simple format, right? But the whole idea is that like you're like trekking together, right? Like a group like you're trekking up, but like on like a kind of psychological hill together where like by the end of it you have like you'll look back oh wow we actually learned a lot together so um yeah we don't want to underrate that sort of travel that was very meta gary <laughs> so meta Anyone have anything to add to this one or another question to pose? Okay, I guess I can pose a provocation. Um, a world without travel. So wait, what do you mean like without, like can I not walk to the supermarket or? No, 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 I'm sorry. Like, what, what, yeah, what, what like, are we? Like a, like a reasonable radius within where you live. Like, you can go to okay. the. Grocery store, but... Wait, is this like out of state, or is this like just your local community? <laughs> so, like, just your local community. Okay. I think like we underrate like little things that make us like travel like in different ways as we were talking about because I've been in quarantine it will be like a year and I'm like I literally like had to stay out in my house because I am with my grandma and she's on the group of risk and everything and so um like if you said to me before like in my life that I would have to pass like an absolute ear in my house like just locked up and everything I would just completely say that I would get crazy and I would just like not survive for it 
Um, but honestly, like it was hard and everything, and I didn't really want to get out. But um, I really think like art and like movies and books really make us like be in other realities and really help in that type of situation. So obviously, like a world without travel would be really sad because I still really love to go to places and like experience other cultures. But I really think like a world without travel will make us understand as it did like in the pandemic. Um, like the little things and like, I don't know, appreciate more like art and movies and books and everything. Yeah, I guess, I guess actually that makes me think travel is also like in your mind, like you can, you can create different worlds. Like when you read like fiction books and you create, like when you imagine what that book looks like or the character that that's traveling so that's that's super interesting i'm just thinking about how like you'd be stuck with the people that live near you and that's it like you'd never be able to like learn about like well i guess you could if like there was communication but like within my state for example like there's such like difference wherever you go like we literally have beach and mountains and then just like suburbs basically but um it's just like I wouldn't get to know about those people because like how else would I learn about them like it's not you know I can't just hop on a zoom call with people from my state and like get to know them or like people nearby like this is one of the few times that I can actually talk to people that I don't have like a school connection with so I just think that we would know so much less about others and ourselves because of that that it would be kind of sad <laughs> I think a world without travel would be a complete disaster. I mean, in a micro level, we're we're having troubles for being in our houses with water and having food. But at the macro level, with the economy, without having these cultural exchanges from one country to another, is just um, a, a complete disaster. Going to more like micro level again, having just communication with your community will. I mean, it will stop the search for for knowledge because you don't have to. Why do you want to learn more a language or or learn about movies if you you don't have access to that? I think a world without trouble would be a disaster. Yes, but um, keeping in mind what um, we uh, said about traveling in your mind and also yeah, escaping to different worlds or fiction worlds. I think that a world without travel is nearly impossible because people will always find ways to, yeah, yeah, to um, come up with new ideas and share them, share their experiences. And yeah, and they still have their imagination and their fantasy. And I think that is also a big part of traveling. Okay, so this is the part where I ask if anyone has anything else to add or something to pose. Uh, I do have a thread or a question. Okay, go ahead. So well, this is my first time, so it may be not be a question, uh, but I mean, what about with um, the passports in other countries? Like, I mean, the US passport is not the same as an Iraqi passport. Do the regulations for the countries have to keep the same as they are? or it should be new regulations to open up a world of new opportunities. Oh, you mean like, like more open borders and, and free travel, stuff like that? Yeah, exactly. I, I think that in a, in a, Yes, I think the EU does it really well. Like the, the Schengen zone in the EU is, there's, there hasn't been any like security risks and they allow like a lot of money and people to flow there. I just think that the reason we, we haven't done it so far is just because um, there's, so, there's so much xenophobia and after COVID there's gonna be even more xenophobia. Um, 
and people just aren't they, borders are already pretty much like essentially open right you need a passport but it's just it takes so long and it blocks so much trade and stuff um but the the only reason we're not going to change is because people are, are just xenophobic naturally so it, that's humanity yeah, yeah. i agree oh, sorry oh, you, <laughs> you can go on go on um, no, I agree. I think like uh, if we think in the past examples like you and there's a block here in South America that really works well, um, it would be a great idea to just like have less passport regulations and changes. Uh, but it's most likely to like this doesn't happen because of all the immigration like um, fake news and people just like not accepting. And I don't know, I think it would ruin be something realistic to think that this will happen post COVID. I think it's more likely to like have a stronger regulation, unfortunately, I would say. Yeah, I th when, when I think uh, about the debates about integration and immigration we had, especially in Germany uh, in 2015, I can agree with what uh, Lua said about that it might not be hap happening, that the restrictions are yeah, going to be limited, more limited or less. But, when, but I think also that um, the Brexit has made me realize how used I've gotten to um, the, yeah, the feeling uh, within the EU to um, yeah, be able to trans transcend borders so easily and that, yeah, I think it's a really good idea. Also, just from like a, a, an emerging standpoint, like I can, the, like the country southern, like the southern countries on the border of like Mexico and Latin America, Right, like they, they have so much um, cultural integration and, and a lot of immigration and it just like economically enriches those areas and culturally enriches those areas. And it's, it's been, in my view, nothing but positive. And I think it, that would happen more if we allowed freer travel and gave everybody the same respect no matter what color their passport was. I'm probably gonna get canceled for that statement in 20 years, but whatever. Yeah, I just wanted to add that it's sad how like um, I, I see that there's like a political movement that arrived like five years ago or so, at least in Brazil, uh, because I did saw this integration of Latin America and Brazil was in like five years ago. And now we have a lot of like fake news and like problems with immigration, even though Brazil doesn't have a lot of immigration, but people have a lot of like uh, fake facts about it so they are against it so we are having problems with like newer countries like Venezuela and Paraguay and like if we look at the numbers there's no really a problem there but it was just something like kind of made up by like a, 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 a right-wing party here in Brazil and just like people believe in it so people in Brazil say that they're against immigration and I don't really think that they really know what they're talking about. So I, I think it's sad that there's a political movement like arriving that is um, sharing fake facts about it and like people aren't really believing in, in it. Anyone have anything else to add before we move on to the reflection? You can pose another question if you want to. Okay, I'm gonna copy the link to these notes that we've been taking and send them in the chat so you all can look at them. And when you have your reflection ready, go ahead and shout it out. Um, so I will say that I have been thinking a lot about how my experience with travel has changed, especially in relation to COVID. 
and you all have convinced me that travel will continue to be meaningful, if not more meaningful in the future, because if we're having less experiences out of our, um, I guess, normal lived experiences, it's just going to make them like stand out more. Um, and just because like we can connect with people online, it will never be the same as in person, so. And if anyone else has those ready, you can go ahead and say it. Um, I've been thinking about how like people who don't appreciate travel, how they would answer some of these questions, because it seems to me like everyone here appreciates it and like respects it. So it makes me wonder how others wouldn't and um, how they would answer if they didn't appreciate travel and why they don't like what the counter would be. Is it just because like they haven't had the experience yet? Or is there something else that like we're not thinking of? Like, I don't know like obviously it's different for each like minority group to travel and there's also like you know gender and sexuality like there's all of these big factors that like go into traveling um depending on where you go or just like depending on who you are so it's just like I wonder if we had those experiences in the room how this conversation might have been different Um, adding to that, I later under like how this conversation would have happened if um, we were talking with people that really haven't the opportunity to travel, like at least physically, because I think from the, the everyone that talked and everything, they mentioned uh, their favorite trips and everything, everyone seemed to have experience in it. There's just people with like I don't know, maybe uh, financially or something um, made it impossible to actually travel. So I would like to wonder like how this conversation would go if we were talking to people that didn't have their opportunity. What I will take from this yeah, track uh, is probably that, is that there are many developing forms of travel in the future for example, virtual reality is something that I've never really thought about before as a yeah, realistic option. But I really hope that we will be able in the future to um, yeah, really develop further um, possibilities to um, travel without yeah, causing emissions. And yeah, I hope that there will be some research done and we will yeah, move on in this area. Yeah, I guess, I guess mine, I'll, I kind of echo what everybody else said. And also like just the word traveling, I've, I've kind of expanded what that means. You know what I mean? Like the, the future stuff. And also, do, do you guys want to say hi to my friends are building a snowman outside? Come on. Guys, say, say hello. Here we go. A little traveling for you all. <laughs> yes, Julia, very wholesome. Bernardo, what about you? I am writing my reflection on board. Well, let me read you what I have till the moment. Travel opportunities change life and mentality. We have to open to learn from people independent of their gender and nationality. Understanding that your personal situation is not the same as the personal situation of other people changes your mind and opens you to curiosity. Good stuff. I'm looking at you, Julia. I'm looking at you. Okay, well, I'll go. Um, I think I've kind of like blocked out lately, like not being able to travel just because it's been like so long, almost a year now for us. But this kind of just like makes me crave it so much more talking about it like this um, because it, it really is just like an experience like no other going to places that were like before kind of unknown to you. So 
yeah, this made me miss travel a lot more than I have been in the recent weeks. Yeah, so this conversation made me real, I guess, has, con has started to convince me or, or convinced me that Gen Z traveling um, is going to be critical to world peace. I think it's just like really hard to want to start a war when you have friends in a country that your country could declare war on, you know. I just think that Gen Z has this different kind of consciousness than like um, older generations. See the bigger picture. Yeah, and, and Gary, you can go ahead and stop screen sharing. Kind of just want to talk now for the people. If it was your first trek, what did you think about the trek in general? I found it so nice. I have never passed for some experience like this because um, when Gary sent the overview, I read it and I really didn't understand what we were doing. But then everything started and like everything flowed in a way. And I don't know, I really think I've taken a lot of things from the discussion and everything. It was like a really interesting method, I think. I had never uh, passed for something like this. So yeah, it was really interesting. I really like it. Yeah, I also really like the thought that we are just gathering in order to um, talk about certain issues and also with a certain structure, which I like. Um, they're not just uh, completely um, confusing or just random thoughts, but uh, I think it is really, um, yes, it gives you a more deeper uh, yeah, view on a topic and yeah. I think this um, intentional gathering is really good. It was nice to meet you guys. I mean, it's the first time I have a conversation with people from around the world and, and discuss such uh, topics with people from around the world is such an interesting thing. And I really enjoyed it. Um, well, it was nice to meet you. And, Let's do it again. <laughs> yes, we'd love to have our special guest on for another trek. <laughs> and thank you all so much for taking the time. I know this was very spontaneous of you all, but I really enjoyed it as well. So I will see you all at a future trek and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Bye. Bye. Bernardo, do you wanna drop your email? Yeah, for sure. So you contact me for the next. empathize with a person and make them seem like not the bad guy they would constantly oh they were a parent of five they were this and this and when they want to villainize a person they'll say nothing and say oh they cruel like they did some bad stuff they like shot down gardens or whatever they can to push the fact that they're dehumanizing people anybody really de depending on who they are. It could be anybody. If they don't like the image of that person, they'll purposefully make them seem worse than what they actually are because they'll dehumanize the person that is truly actually the victim. Yeah, great call out. Um, if no one else has any other points to add to this, we can go on to reflection. I'm going to send a link to the notes we've been taking here so that you all can look over them for a minute and I can get us started with reflection. Um, I think it's cool how we gravitated towards storytelling as it relates to our own lives. 
and it's making me realize like I guess just how much of it doesn't translate over um I'm not surprised that since Ian's here we ended up talking a lot about empathy but just like in relation to like we see ourselves as the good guys but if you think about like everyone sees themselves as the good guy <laughs> and we you know Julia talked about cancel culture like we know that we do things that are bad uh, and that we would look down upon other people for doing but it's just like we're constantly excusing ourselves because we feel like it's a part of our storyline <laughs> and so I guess just like this has helped me realize um just everything as it relates to that this is kind of related but also bringing in one other kind of point I'm thinking about if you guys know Dan Harmon the creator of Rick and Morty um, there's a couple posts he has about story and story structure. And he always talks about story is when a character starts from a place that they know, this world that they're familiar with, and then something happens, they have to go get something, accomplish something, achieve something, and they dip into unconscious territory, things that they haven't faced before. And then when they get to the other side of it, there's a new consciousness of something they've learned or gained. So there's an expansion of consciousness, something like new that's come to the forefront which is just amazing to think about because all stories are about the evolution of human consciousness it's like expanding forward and if there's a story where something all just goes to crap and everyone dies or something we just feel bad like it's not a, it's not our nature for things to continually go bad it's actually in our nature for things to improve always which is what stories reinforce um yeah i just wanted to share that kind of insight that i thought was gives me a lot of hope yeah, I agree. I think that's probably why people still gravitate towards really sad, dramatic um, movies, because even in those, you still see the main character like gain something from it. So I, I totally agree with that. Personally, I think it makes the characters human. It shows them emotions. It shows them how to feel like if you see them evolve from what they were to something else, it they're evolving as a human being. They're getting better. If you start off with a bad character, I don't think a good story comes from a perfect character. Your main protagonist has to have flaws and has to overcome them over time. And when once they do that, the story has ended and it's satisfying. Yeah, that's what I was going to say in the um, us being the main character of our own on our own stories, because uh, if you think about a story with no conflict, it's incredibly boring. So if you're able to view your life from a bigger picture, from a bird's eye view and look at it as a story, whenever you have conflict, those are actually the most interesting moments in the story. And so that it, I reflect on that whenever I'm going through some stress or crap, I'm like, this is a great chapter in the movie. Like, this is a good episode, you know? One way that, like, someone told me once before was, like, they put it as, like, character building where, like, every, like, bad thing that happens are like, oh, this is just character development. It's character building. Like, this is just your character arc. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, I don't know about that, but it certainly puts it in a different perspective. So I love, um, the way you phrase it as like just a good episode because it's like a juicy one with a lot of things going on so that was a great perspective yeah and just to like add on really quick I know in reflections but this is just such a good thread that I need to add on to um like my favorite tv show of all time is Bojack Horseman and that so much delves into all of that all of the nitty gritty, all of that, all of the sad, everything. And I don't, I can't spoil the last season because that would be like the worst thing ever for me to do. But it so goes towards that. There's an expansion of consciousness at the end of the story. Anyways. I can add something. Um, that also reminds me of the Mork and Lula. Oh, I already forgot the uh, Rick and Morty. There you go. The beginning near the beginning rick used to always say like i'm just a bad dad and i'm a bad person but later on in like near the final end he finally realizes what those words mean and i'm like wow he used the same words 
twice in totally different moods and it changed the story completely and i'm like wow it's pretty neat so like depending on how far you're in to being coming a different person changes who you are now like you can say something now but later on you can realize wow i'm actually this and like you can feel yourself changing and hear it adding on to that like i've never really considered like how the way that we see a story changes as we experience it like how pervasive stories are and like shaping the way we approach things understand things because like a story about one thing can shape the story you make about another thing so i guess this discussion demonstrated like how stories change you and then, like that changes the way you see stories. Yeah, my reflection is kind of along the same lines of just how like stories are so powerful and like do shape the way that we like come into like a lot of knowledge. Um, and I think like one of the points that like Madison brought up earlier about like the news reminded me also of like textbooks, which are like supposedly fact but like I think a lot about like my history book and like I was watching a show that was like historical drama and so like that skewed me towards like a character in history and when I read it in the my textbook it was completely opposed to her and like we were having this discussion in class and I was like oh that's so interesting the way that like people learned about her completely changed and because I had a different story to combat like another story that I was receiving it just changed the way that I was able to see like what should have just been a fact, if that makes sense. So like, I think it's so interesting how stories can really shape things and um, just like reflecting and bringing it all together, just how pervasive isn't really the word I'm looking for, but just how like stories are everywhere and just kind of like thinking about the influence that they have and also um, reflecting on like my own biases in like interpreting other people's stories too, because that definitely plays a role. Um, my reflection kind of goes to the, the point of the, the main character conversation. I was thinking a lot about exactly how empowering it is to be able to tell your own story, to be able to tell yourself your own story, to realize that um, to yourself. And if you want to share it with others, that too, but really how empowering it is to yourself to, to be able to tell your own story. I can before we move on can I ask you Leora do you have any thoughts on why that is like do you do you do you feel any specific experience in telling your own story do you have any reflections on on why that makes you feel better yeah I think it's just it has to do with human nature of being able to you know do things on your own terms and and be it's, I think a lot of people want to be in control of their own lives and, that, and that's very hard so when you have that grasp on who you are and this is who I am and I'm comfortable with that, this is my story, I think that is is so essential in, in, in feeling empowered, basically. Um, I think this was someone else about to speak. I'm not sure. Okay. You can go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. Um, in response to Leora, I also think that, um, you know, when you're living through your own story, um, kind of back to what Ian said about how uh, going through challenges without framing your life in such an optimistic and amazingly interesting way can be very, very dreary um, and angst ridden. And so when you're living through life, um, it's very easy to get bogged down in the various turmoils and tribulations that you're faced with constantly. So when you kind of frame your own narrative as a story, you, hi, you know, hindsight is 2020. So I think you gain a greater appreciation for where you've been and where you are. Um, 
like for instance, my in class for like this warm up activity thing that we did, um, our professor uh, made us like broke us out into breakout rooms and forced not forced us but uh, made us I guess give an account of our lives from the beginning of quarantine to the end. And while you're living through it, you just you don't realize that you're not the same person as you were yesterday and you're not really cognizant of the immense amount of growth that you've experienced. But when you finally are able to gather up the various things that have happened to you into one cohesive line, I don't know, um, it's very astounding as to how much you've changed. And I think it's in that, right, very empowering. That like goes exactly of what I was gonna say or goes with it. I was gonna say like, when you're telling your story or something about yourself, when you remember something and saying your story, sometimes biases change it. And when you're trying to downplay or upplay your story, sometimes between what you think happened or what actually happened are between in your head or what you remember. And I always remember hearing a story between my friends and I, I remember a long time ago, uh, this is around a long, long time ago. This is when I was a little, little kid. And I remember the situation of when me and my friends made a group and we just talked about bananas. And so <laughs> I remember my friend, her name's Lily. And she's like, oh, wait, didn't we talk about like, I don't know, avocados? And another is like, oh, didn't we talk about peaches? And between what we like, I personally like bananas, she likes peaches, and so on and so forth, we remember it differently between our own biases and what we remember the story being. I remember when I was younger, I thought I was super shy, but apparently I was really confident and really outgoing as a child, and I just never knew, or so on and so forth. It's between our biases and what we personally remember or something that changes the story and changes what happened. Julia, Adam, or Gary, do you have your reflection ready? I do. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh. Adam, you go, Adam. Okay. <laughs> um, the th one thing that really stood out to me in this talk, which there have been so many great things, um, was the idea of being conscious of accountability to who we're talking to and what we're trying to communicate. This is really big for me, and it's actually one of the main reasons I'm here today um, my own personal situation is that I'm not, I don't have like kids or, or younger siblings of my, you know, in my family that I'm in constant contact with. So I really want to get more connected to people younger than me to find out what, what's resonating with them. And, um, you know, just what y'all are thinking about storytelling, because I have a bunch of ideas of my own, but I really feel like it's important to bounce them around and, um, kind of help refine them. So I just want to put it out there that if um, that I'm available for like a conversation, if any of y'all want to talk about storytelling or, or share more thoughts or ideas about this kind of stuff, or even ask questions or whatever. But it makes me really excited to hear that, that you guys are on that same track too, of like who's hearing this and, you know, what do we really want to say? Excuse me. <laughs> And that's awesome. And yeah, we're glad you're here today. So thanks for being here. But I think my point is that I just like always feel like reminding myself at that point, everyone's kind of a few people have made in this reflection, but also in the beginning of just like how much power your words have, not only on you and the story you tell for yourself, but like the stories you tell other people. Um, like movie lines, we know they can be so empowerful, empowering on us in terms of like the emotions that we feel. And it's the same thing for our own words, even though we don't always put so much weight on that. Like even me talking about if I burnt my toast this morning and if I can put it in a way of like, oh, I'm an idiot or I can put it in like a humorous lighthearted way of like things happen. And like even those slight moments during your day and how like you tell your story to other people impacts you um, internally. So yeah, I think just that part of the conversation is always a good reminder. 
Yeah, that is so true. It's it's a big part of like a mental health and mental like self care is to be conscious of what story about yourself you're telling yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I guess what this trek reminded me. Well, so so one thing that I um I like to say is that different systems processes uh cultures have have certain values embedded in them and also they uh engender certain values but also i realized certain through this conversation that certain systems processes cultures also they uh they can be fertile ground for certain stories as well right so treks um natural like now we we can easily say that we had the story of 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 learning about stories together and expanding our consciousness about stories right so it's a very simple format that we are all like weaved into right now um and like yeah stories are sort of subjective but like there are certain situations that make it such that everyone's sort of experiencing the same sort of story so I think that's it's something for us to really think about, like when we're design, as we increasingly have the power to to shape the society around us. Like, what, like, are you creating environments where people can have positive stories about themselves, about other people, um, so that it's not just like, hey, you're imposing a story on someone. It's like. Yeah, obviously this, this story is happening. It's a great story. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be part of it. All right. Um, I'd also like to know, Adam, Ian, and Jacob, since this was your first trek, what did you think about the format and just the trek in general? I really yeah, like so how... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you go, Adam. You go. You go. Okay. I was just going to say, I really like how it starts with word association. I think that's a great um, way to spur conversation. And it, em it encourages like uh, spontaneous thought and new, uh, new self reflections on what you think about a topic. Because that's what happened to me. I, I never would have consciously decided storytelling is about healing. But when, when I was asked to do a word association, it just came up. So I think that's a super effective idea. Kind of like exactly on the same wavelength as Adam there. Like, I really like the structure of the conversation, how we kind of open up, like, what do we think about this word? What do we associate with it? And we kind of like, the discussion unfolds by itself. That's really cool. Um, I particularly like how, and then like we reflect on the entire process and how we got to where we got and what messages we were taking home with us. Because that kind of reflection is what, you know, is how we separate what we take with us and what we absorb into the way that we see things. So I really like that. Yeah, I was just gonna add on to that. I, I like the, the word associated in the beginning, just an opportunity to start with some fun. And then I just like how grounded it is, you know, just to have, be able to have a conversation and just kind of stream together. I really enjoy that. It keeps it uh, honest. And then, um, I mean, I love hearing people's personal kind of, uh, uh stories like the deeper those go the more fun it tends to be i think of like people's most favorite movies blade runner uh rick and morty bojack horseman the more of that kind of stuff the more i don't know i feel like it it, it gets to more of the heart of the it's more personal and kind of relatable i guess it's fun john wick <laughs> yeah, that, I actually want to add to um, from a format perspective, I really love the split screen with seeing the notes. Um, it helps me a lot just like remember what topic we're on. And um, also, it's really interesting to speak and like have my own idea of what I'm saying in my head and then see that reflected back in the way someone else interpreted it is very interesting. And um, you guys do a good job. And, and it's just it makes me more aware of like how I'm sounding to other people. So that's cool. <laughs> For sure. I think it's it's so obvious to me how ubiquitous stories are and just how kind of like embedded they are in our being. 
that we don't even realize a lot of the times when we're like in a story or following a storyline. I mean, like you all said with the structure, it's almost like every trek is a story, right? You start off with the word association, the conversation, then the end. Um, so I guess if you're thinking about it like that, um, the end, thank you all for participating in this story. <laughs> um, <laughs> was that cheesy, Julia? <laughs> uh, anyways, seriously, thank you all so much for coming. I really enjoyed having both Ian and Adam, and of course, all of our community members and if any of you want to come to a future trek, you are more than welcome. We have them all the time. And we would love to have you back. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. Have guys. a great night, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you guys. See you around soon. Bye.